And we are back. It's still the breakfast and Plus TV Africa set for first major a conversation this morning on security and elections in Nigeria. Well, the Independent National Electoral Commission, Nigeria's electoral umpire, INEC, as they are known, uh, has lamented the growing wave of election-related insecurity across the country, expressing fear uh, that the trend, if not checked, could lead to the cancellation or postponement of the forthcoming general polls in the country. Well, the chairman, a board of the Electoral Institute, TEI, that's INEX training arm, Professor Abdullahi Abdul Zuru, he said the development could hinder the declaration of election results and precipitate uh, what he calls a constitutional crisis. Uh, the electoral empire therefore called for concerted efforts to stem the tide of violence in the country. Well, data earlier released by the Independent National Electoral Commission detailed about 50 attacks on its facilities across the 15 states in the country, namely Imo with 11 attacks, Oshun with 7 attacks, Enugu with 5, Akwaibo with 5, Ebonyi with 4, Cross River State with 4, Abia State with 4, Anambra State with 2, uh, Taraba State with 2, Kaduna with 1, Bono with 1, Bayelsa 1, Ondo, Lagos, and Ogun with 1 as well. Um, and joining us to discuss insecurity and in, in its effect on Nigeria's forthcoming election, we have uh, two guests. Uh, Dr. Omosho Ladeji, a political scientist, uh, joins us via Zoom from Singapore, a country I love so much. Uh, Dr. Deji, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. Uh, and of course, Dixon Osage is with us in the studio. Dixon is a global security analyst. Good morning to you, Mr. Osage. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. From Nigeria, I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. No, we're here. <laughs> all right. Um, gentlemen, uh, I think I'll start with a uh, uh, gentleman from Singapore. Um, wh what are your thoughts on this, this, this you know, warning, this fear? Uh, expressed by an official of INEC, and of course, as the media has taken in that INEC has spoken, uh, we're not unaware of the attacks on INEC facilities in different states, both uh, at the state level and the local government level. Do you agree that if the security situation is not unchecked, we might see uh, an effect on next uh, this year's election? Yeah, most certainly. The insecurity situation, if not checked, can have great impact on the 2023 general election because people need to be at peace for election to hold. So the statement by INEC, it's either what we should expect, what they are um, planning to do based on the recurring pattern over the years, or what is happening and they are trying to prevent. So I see it from two perspectives. But in the days ahead, it will come to fruition whether it is what INEC is planning to do because we have cancellation um, of the vote on the eve of election in 2011, 2015, and 2019, three successive times. So it may be like a launch pad for what we should expect in um, next month in terms of postponement, and it may also be that INEC is informing us about the true situation of things and they're trying to navigate themselves successfully around it. Either way, peace is essential. In an atmosphere of violence, in an atmosphere of conflict and rigor, definitely there cannot be a peaceful conduct of election. It will lead to voter apathy. It will lead to manipulation of the system itself, and both the electoral empire and the uh, electorate themselves will be vulnerable. So I think that INEC is on point to have notified Nigerians, but I believe they should be informing Nigerians just for the sake of awareness, and they should be working with the security agencies to prevent a situation whereby we would have another postponement of the election. If you look at under the current INEC chairman in 2019, there is um, there was a postponement of the election and I believe now he should make effort have had four years to prepare to write his name in gold this time to make sure that there's no postponement of election. Even though we can say that uh, INEC 
um, fulfillment of their duty is relative in the sense that if INEC is ready, if the security agency says they are not ready, there's no much that INEC can do. But certainly, based on the fragile security system of Nigeria at this point in time, if there is no guarantee for um, security, definitely it will mark the conduct of the election. All right. Um, uh, Dixon Osage, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, uh, he went down memory lane, and we know that in uh, 2015, um, the then good of Jonathan administration delayed elections for some time because of a Boko Haram insurgency in the northwest at the time, northeast at the time. Um, as, we, as it stands, do you think that the attacks, I think it's shared data saying 50 of its uh, facilities have been attacked. Do we have a situation that warrants such a fear, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, I think uh, INEC uh, should be held accountable uh, because uh, I don't uh, expect uh, an agency that had four, year, four years to plan coming up with excuses. You know, we're talking about critical infrastructure here. And when we talk about critical infrastructure, I think uh, INEC owes Nigerian duty of care to protect their own facility. Uh, not, that's why they're independent National Electoral Commission, independent in the sense that uh, they carry out their own activities themselves. They shouldn't expect uh, any agency to interfere. Uh, from look, looking at their own properties around the corner, around this country, uh, what I expected for INEC to do is to carry out an assessment of their property uh, across uh, across the country because from 2019 till now, it's, 20, it's four years. If you have four years to plan, that tells you that, for example, if you're going to a bank now, let me take, for example, a bank in Nigeria here, where you have uh, the nairas, the dollars, and whatever the case may be, you can't break in easily uh, to, 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 you know, to, rob, uh, to rob the bank. So INEC should start looking at voters' card as a banking system. They should start looking at their, uh, uh, their, uh, their, all their equipment as a banking system. They need to start Start integrating security design in their facility because if you come on air, if they come on air and start saying that their facility are being uh, attacked or whatever the case may be, I will ask them a question: What are the security design you integrated uh, during the construction of those facilities? Do you just pick up materials and take it to a local government and just dump it there, uh, where criminal will just come, break in swiftly, cut those equipment away, and you are coming to tell Nigerians that those uh, 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 item has been cut away or has been attacked? It's not acceptable in any uh, given crime. Because uh, as an agency, you know very well that this voters' material, this voters' uh, uh, card or equipment are critical to the development of the Nigerian state. They are critical to the success of the Nigerian democratic system. So it's not something you just take into take to some uh, given environment, just dump it there in a primary school, in a secondary school, or in a local government. Because I went to a Kaja uh, local government some time pass and somewhere you can just break in and get into those facilities. We're talking about uh, 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 items that are, you know, critical to the survival of the Nigerian state. So, for me, I, I don't think INEC have any excuse to give Nigerians because we have four good years. So, I will gain admission 1999 will be graduate, uh, 2019 will be graduating this year. That is four years uh, in the university. So, INEC have four years to plan. They have four years to fortify uh, their security system. They have four years to, you know, beef up the security of their infrastructure here. Yeah. We're not talking about beefing up all the infrastructure uh, in all the country. We're talking about where those materials are kept. If you are keeping them in the premises, for example, like in this your uh, uh, edifice, uh, I think they should fortify that edifice because criminal, what they don't like is delay. For a criminal to carry out a criminal activities, they have the opportunity. So what the criminal elements are doing here is that they are exploiting the vulnerability of INEC. Your vulnerability is the criminal's opportunity. So don't give them that uh, room to exclude. So you said the, 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 the agency, the other commission, if anything happens, they have themselves to blame. They have themselves to blame. Because they've given left loopholes oh, yeah, for loopholes. these criminals to exploit. To, to exploit, yeah. And looking at the situation, they know what is on ground. They know what they need to do. They, they know what they need to, to do. To counter what these criminals are doing. Oh, yes. Deji, what are your thoughts on this? Because uh, Dixon here is saying that, you know, it, uh, they have four years and they know what they have to do. If anything happens, then Anna gets to blame. Well, I do it. Dixon, but I have a bit of different opinion on the part of um, whether we should blame INEC. I think for the security, we should blame the police instead of blaming INEC. I think the police, they know how to be um, active when they choose to be. For example, when there was um, an attack on INEC 
facility in the southeast. They know that election is approaching. These facilities are vulnerable. So I think that at that point in time, those island facilities would have been identified as hotspots, and the DSS, the military police would have provided adequate security for those facilities. But that has not been the case. And I, I began to wonder that, why should this be an attack on INF facility is a signal that it can occur in every other state because in Nigeria, the kind of politics we play is very, very lucrative. Everybody wants to go into politics for what they are going to gain. So the stakes are high on the part of the politician. It's like a do or die affair. So that makes the facility of INF vulnerable. So I think I will put the blame at the doorstep of the police for failing to provide adequate security. And that's one of the problems that INEC has been having over the years because the police, if they don't cooperate with INEC, definitely there's no much that INEC can do in the sense that, for example, now, INEC has made giant strides with the introduction of VIVAS encouraging technology for the transparency of the election. But INEC is not in charge of security. He's working collaboratively with the police. So if INEC independence is compromised by the police, no much can be done. For example, we have a situation whereby in terms of logistics, INEC has to collaborate with NULT, W, the National Union of Road Transport Workers. And sometimes, some of these transport you know, in their state will align with politicians to sabotage the effort of INEC. In that instance, we can't really blame INEC because INEC has provided the um, election materials, ad hoc staff, and everything necessary. But their effort is now being sabotaged. So I think we need commitment from the security agencies and other agencies that INEC works with for us to have a peaceful conduct of the election. And that goes down to the table of the president and the inspector general of police. The president has said it repeatedly that he has given orders for the police to do their job. So I don't see any situation. If there's any um, secession rally, the police and military are always active. Right. So when there is now attack on INEC facilities. Is it that the police intelligence system did not foresee it? So, is so it that the, the, you, you, you're, you're yes, saying yes. The, the police is in a position to ensure that uh, you know INEC facilities are protected, uh, and of course that uh, elections are run smoothly. Um, uh, uh, Osage, th this is uh, something that some have also said. You know, the police has they have the guns, they have the the AK-47s, they know what to do. INEC is not a security... We, we are getting it wrong here. Uh, uh, doctor is trying to make okay. a point, but yeah. I think we're getting it wrong here. Uh, you invited me to the studio this morning. If you don't invite me here, I will not be here. Okay. Uh, it is the duty of the INEC to invite the Nigerian security agent to protect their facility. Uh, the security agent cannot intrude in the uh, activities of INEC. Are you with me? So the reason why they cannot intrude is that if you don't invite them, they will not be there. Now, this is how it is. What should have been done is very simple. I listened to the INX security director uh, some uh, weeks ago on, uh, on a TV station, and uh, he was trying to make some complaint. What that man should have done is to have, you know, projected uh, uh, risk assessments in all the given facility here in Nigeria, having carried out those risk assessments, ascertain the vulnerability analysis of those risk assessments, then send a report to the Nigerian police or the, and the Nigerian military and tell them that XYZ facilities, XYZ properties are prone and vulnerable to attack. We will need to project like 2000, uh, 100 or 200 policemen in those facilities. In the last election in uh, Ocean State also, uh, the Nigerian police projected 30,000 security agents you know, to 
you know, uh, prevent a, a, a breakdown of law or law of law order in that facility. So what INEC should have done is that in each of those facilities where we have those critical infrastructure, they should have carried out an assessment, carry out crime mapping. Crime mapping in the sense that when you go to uh, look at uh, maybe, for example, Abia State, for example, and you look, uh, you see that maybe the threat, uh, the threat assessment in Abia State is on the high rise. You inform the Nigerian police that, hey, this is the report from our security department. The threat assessment in Abia State is very high. In XYZ location, we will need like 50 policemen to mount that. Put it in writing, send it to the IGP, and request for those uh, men, and do rightly, uh, they, those men will be deployed to such facility. So the Nigerian police are, is not to be blamed, the Nigerian uh, military is not to be blamed. It is the duty of the INEC to carry out an assessment of that. It's the INEC business. The money the federal government released was not released to the Nigerian police. The money the federal government released was not released to the Nigerian uh, military. It was released to INEC. So INEC owes Nigerian duty of care to carry out an assessment of all the uh, uh, crime-prone environment and inform the Nigerian police. For example, now, if I'm uh, perceiving a threat in my environment, the police are not everywhere to see. The, myself, I will inform the police, say, hey, uh, I'm suspecting, uh, I'm, I'm seeing some suspicious movement within my facility. Please, I will need the attention of the general police. So if you don't call up the police to pro pro uh, uh, project security men in those crime-prone environments or where those facilities are deployed, then INEC will continue to suffer attack. If you have 200 policemen, I mean, we have 724 local government, for example, and those items have been deployed in most of those local governments, what the INEC needs to do is to project those policemen in those facilities. But what I have found out the problem is, is that uh, there is no effective risk assessment and vulnerability analysis of their property. If they are carried out such activity between 2021 and 2022, carry out this crime mapping. They'll be able to identify uh, the possible location that will be prone to attack. Then they will you know, send a letter to the general police that we need you know, an effective uh, protection strategy within this facility. Then this facility will be protected. So for me, INEC will be head responsible. All right. Uh, 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 gentlemen, the, the federal government had, had has this morning, um, you know, the, the, the information mechanism of the government has been set in motion to counter what uh, this senior official Reinick had to say um, about uh, elections in volatile areas, volatile parts of the country, or uh, red zones, if you want to call it that. Uh, Minister of Culture uh, and Information, Culture and Tourism, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, uh, yesterday had to make that move. Uh, in a statement, he said that uh, the security, the elections rather, will hold a scheduled adding that nothing has happened to alter the timetable. So the position of the federal government, you know, through the Minister of Information, as we speak now, is he saying that elections will hold a scheduled, uh, that nothing will happen to alter the election, um, or nothing has happened, rather, that will alter the election. Uh, the Information Minister is also saying that security agencies have assured the nation of a peaceful atmosphere uh, for the poor. Um, so what, what are your thoughts on, on this? Um, this new uh, statement issued by the federal government to counter what that senior official Reinick said, which was, I think, his view as a, a, a you know, qualified person, experienced person, and an official Reinick with information on what has been happening around the country. Um, do you think the federal government is just trying to you know, gloss over this situation or that indeed um, Lai Mohammed is right? I'll start with you, uh, Deji. Well, I think if the federal government is just trying to gloss over the situation because we've seen um, orders upon orders, statement upon statement. I think if the federal government is really sincere, the president should have worked with the National Assembly in the space of the seven and a half years that this government has been in power to reduce the premium that we place on politics. People will attack INEC facilities based on interest and this interest falls down to the interest of the politicians but if the premium that we place on politics is quite low definitely the politicians will not have interest some of them instead of being politicians now will go and face their business maybe or find a career in this civil service or just find any other thing to do but so far as the game is higher than the cost. There will always be an attempt to sabotage this system. Be be because the gain right now, what politicians stand to gain, you can imagine somebody that's 
desperate to, to be a governor, a politician that has gone to bank to get a loan to make sure that he has the finance to win the election. That politician becomes desperate. He becomes a political investor. He is getting the money to invest, <laughs> knowing that <laughs> That's if an he interesting way win, put it. he's going to recoup way more. So I think that the president should have used the opportunity of this second term to reduce what politicians stand to gain by being in power. If the president has done that, definitely there will be less attack on any offices because you know that even though if you have the power, like we have in other times, you cannot um, sabotage the system, you cannot embezzle funds. So I think government should move from words to action to make sure that the premium will place on politics is reduced so that they definitely there will be less interest in politics and people will go there for service. In terms of the insecurity, why is it that during election period in Yobe, even the Oparam hotspot, there will be relative peace? How do the politicians maneuver their way with the Boko Haram boys, the insurgent, the bandits? Oh. So it shows that the, the politicians, they know how to kind of like maneuver their way if they want to. So, but if the political space is quite uninteresting in terms of that, in terms of the financial remuneration and if the um, institutions of government is quite strong that okay. you can't play God okay. when you are in political power, then I think there will be less insecurity and yeah. there will be less attack okay. for that next facilities itself. The attack is for a purpose yeah. and that is to gain and retain power. All right. You talked about political uh, investment. <laughs> Very funny. And well, Sergei, you know, we hear in this report, jolted the federal government. They didn't see it coming. And uh, uh, Lai Mohammed, like you heard me say, has moved uh, uh, to to allay the fears to say election will hold. There's no plan to scuttle, to cancel or postpone the election. Um, do you agree with Lai Mohammed? Is he a prophet to know what will happen ahead? Um, do you agree that the situation we've seen across the states of, uh, with these 50 attacks does not mean elections will not hold. They definitely will hold, as Mohammed is saying. Well, it's a forecast from uh, Lai Mohammed, and uh, he uh, has right to his own views. Uh, for me, uh, I think uh, the election is going to hold. But there's possibility of postponements, because we've had that several in 2015, it was postponed. Uh, 2019, it was postponed at 12, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this time around, I also think it might be postponed. Uh, you know, like uh, Dr. Deji made some very fantastic points when he was talking about uh, uh, political investment. Uh, you know, one of the problems we are suffering here in Nigeria uh, political brutality. Uh, because um, most of these criminal elements, uh, for me, I think they have been enlisted uh, from political talks. You know, sometimes when you make use of these talks, and after the election, you abandon them, those uh, equipment they use in carrying out their talk activities, to use it to you know, attack the society, use it to attack the state. So uh, if the election is postponed or if it's not postponed, the major thing is that 2020 election will definitely hold because uh, I don't think we're going to hold it in 2024. It's definitely going to hold it in 2023 because uh, the president or oh, uh, the international community and this great nation, uh, duty of care or this nation, uh, uh, the, the accountability to run this election because uh, it was handed over he gained this power from President Goodluck Jonathan, and uh, he needs to also leave a mark, a credibility mark, so that uh, we'll remember him for yeah. holding a free, credible yes, in, in, election. Indeed, he had uh, said last year that uh, the will of the people must prevail in All the right. general election, and that uh, is uh, what exactly the government will do. He had given a, a marching order to security agencies, and I think on December 2 last year, the uh, uh, the National Security Advisor, Baba Gana Mungunu, had said okay. that since the President said this, we're sounding a warning to the political actors, politicians, that won't tolerate any anything. We are good at sounding warning. Yeah. It's, it's belong. But is, is it just about the politicians? You know, I mean, even the politicians are themselves uh, uh, a threat, uh, endangered species as far as bandits are concerned, as far as terrorists are concerned, as far as unknown gunmen are concerned. The politicians themselves are hiding 
from these unknown gunmen? Yeah, they created uh, the, the problem themselves because, uh, you know, sometimes we fail to think about the Nigerian state. If we have people who think about the Nigerian state, uh, you understand that election is a win or lose. It's a game of two faces. There's no draw in election. You either win or you lose. And if it's a game of two faces, uh, I'm not talking about two babad or two faces musician here. If it's a game of two faces, uh, every politician needs to understand that uh, they live to fight another day. Uh, but most times, our politician, what they do, they see this election as a do or die affair. They see it as, uh, man, I need to recover yeah. uh, my, my losses. I need to gain my losses. We've okay. seen a lot of people throwing money around, uh, throwing banters around, gaslighting. So you, 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 you're saying that they have the, the, the power, the politicians, to also make sure there is no uh, uh, violence. Oh yeah, they need to talk okay. to their followers and talk okay. to their people to ensure right. there's no We'll see what happens because, I mean, in, in uh, a uh, uh, separatist group, IPUB oh. had said, okay. you know, in, in the Southeast, there will be no elections. Before now, okay. we don't know if the game has changed a bit because of the emergence of Peter B. Uh, but the non government phenomenon is still there. Okay. We have, uh, you know, terrorists and bandits both in the north and the south, the east and west. Let's see what happens. Um, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. Joining us via Zoom from Singapore, we've had uh, Dr. Dr. Moshala Deji, a political scientist. And uh, I don't know if you're joining us from Tlaki or Sentosa or any of those parts of Singapore. Uh, Dixon Osage has been here with me in the studio from Nigeria, from Nigeria which we so, so much about <laughs> from Victoria Island, Lagos is a global security analyst. Thank you gentlemen Thank very much you for, for your time. Me. Thank you. Right. We'll be back uh, with more discussions right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Please stay with us.